Paul Cezanne was born to a wealthy French family in 1839. Cezanne had a traditional childhood, but he truly loved to make art. But Cezanne's father demanded that he attend law school. He believed that artistry was not a prestigious economic passion and discouraged Paul from pursuing it. Hey, read this. <laughs> Towards the end of 1859, Cezanne wrote letters to his friend Emile Zola explaining his desires to become an artist. He continued to study law for two years until he was able to transfer to the École des Beaux Arts in Paris. Once he arrived at art school though, he became depressed because his art was not as good as his peers. He pushed through because of Zola's encouragement, but in the end, didn't try to make a career out of his work. Crestfallen, he returned to his hometown, Aix-en-Provence, to work at his father's bank. He was also avoiding the draft. After a few years of being crushed by the monotony of banking labor in Aix-en-Provence, Cezanne returned to Paris to showcase his work in the official shows at the Impressionists. Tragically, they were not well received. Ooh. He admired the revolutionary spirit of the most advanced post-impressionists, including Edward Manet, Camille Pissarro, and Claude Monet. But his self-isolating personality was off-putting to them. He made contact only with Zola, his supportive writer friend. As he continued to develop his painting, looking on the influences from afar of his contemporaries, he began to create a dynamic style that used lots of contrasting light, hinting at the future of Fauvism. He regularly showed his paintings at Impressionist exhibitions, unfortunately to the acclaim of only one patron, Victor Choquet, <laughs> whose portrait he painted in 1877. In 1886, he married a woman who had modeled for him in art school, Marie Hortense Fiquet, and his father died a few months later, giving him the financial freedom he had long pursued, unfortunately late in his life. Soon, they had a son and moved to li live along the Oise River. There, Cezanne began regular collaboration with Camille Pissarro, one rare artistic soul who could bear his personality. Cezanne's unpopularity persisted through March of 1903, when writer Henri Rochefort published Love for the Ugly, an extremely critical article on Cezanne's art. According to Rochefort, spectators were laughing uncontrollably when coming face-to-face to -face with Cezanne's style. <laughs> they became flooded with copies of the article with notes asking him to leave Aix and Provence. Feeling extremely disheartened, Cezanne became even more isolated. During this depressive time of his life, he focused on the nature and beauty of Provence, France. He created some of his most famous works, including the series Mont Saint-Victoire. He then died of pneumonia three years later, in 1906, at the age of 67. But his legacy shines on to this day. Hi Paul, how are you? Je suis bon. Glad to hear it. I'm excited to talk with you about your art today. <clears throat> you started your artistic career with some pushback, right? Please tell us about that. Oui. I hate my father. He is la pierre, the worst. He wanted me to be a lawyer, but I, I wanted to be an artiste. That is lovely. And what an artist you are. Do you consider yourself to be more of a stylistic or academic painter? When I started, I wanted to fit into the model of my peers at École de Beaux Arts. But as time went on and I faced rejection from reviewers in Paris, I focused more on ideas of images rather than form. Interesting. So how specifically did your art style evolve over the course of your life? First, it was smooth and stuffy. But once I broke away from the academy, I began to use more evident brush strokes and contrasting light. I can totally see that. The Boy in the Red Vest has a lot of contrasting light. That's one of my personal favorites of yours. Matisse and Picasso said that you are the father of us all, referring to the post-impressionists. What do you say about that? I only have one child. Okay, thank you so much for your time. Au revoir, Paul.